The CDC says that between 1992 and 2008, 155 commercial fishermen died after falling overboard, making commercial fishing among America's most dangerous jobs. Our Sunday morning cover story is from Jim Axelrod. John Aldridge and Anthony Suzinski, best buddies since second grade, are co-owners of the Anna Mary, a 44-foot fishing boat. For the last 14 years, they've pulled up lobsters and crabs from the sea floor off the coast of Montauk, Long Island. It's like oh, we got food, we got fuel, the boat's running right, we're off on another adventure. But these two hardy lobster men could have done with a little less adventure one July evening four years ago. 40 miles offshore at 2.30 in the morning, Anthony asleep below deck. John wanted to fill the tanks where they would soon store their catch. And I had to move the cooler off the hatch. A 125-pound cooler sat on top of the tank's hatch. Come back here. And I John picked up a metal hook to move it. And I put it in the handle here, and I pulled it all my might. And when I did, it just snapped. And the momentum just pushed me right out the back of the boat. The boat was on automatic pilot, and John, wearing no life vest, watched helplessly as the Anna Mary motored away. I could see the boat, but then I come down on the, in the wave, and I couldn't see the boat, and then come up on the crest, and then you see it, and then it's gone. Were you screaming for Anthony? Screaming. But knowing that there's no way he's going to hear me. You know. You know you're done. Today's the day I'm going to die. With his mind consumed by impending death, some instinctive part of John Aldrich stayed focused on life. What'd you do? I realized that my boots were very buoyant. They were so just I, like a life preserver? Well, or? when I fell in the water, I was on my back, and I was doing like this, you know, trying to stay afloat, and my legs came up to the surface. I just clicked. All right, that's a sign right there. I got my breath, and I go, wow, maybe I should just empty the water out of the thing and push it back in the water with some air pocket in it and see what it does. And I did that, and I tested, and I go, wow. And I basically took it and put it under my arm. John, that is crazy fast thinking. You got to think quick or you die. Afloat in the moonlit water, John Aldridge turned his focus to the next pressing issue the ocean provided. And you're sitting there and you're spinning and you, you know, you're trying to, you know, is something coming around me? You know, you don't know, you're freaking out. 15 feet away, I see two shark fins come up. And I'm like, this is not getting it. This is Hang not on. real. You saw two shark fins? Yeah. So I had to come into this whole little mantra in my head of breathe, breathe easy, stop panic and just go with the thing and then not focus on that they're right there. Staying calm worked. The shark swam off. Who are you thinking of? I'm thinking of my family. I'm thinking that nobody in the world knows I'm missing. Four hours later, Anthony woke up in his bunk and could not find John. I was in disbelief, straight up disbelief. He can't be not here. U.S. Coast Guard, U.S. Coast Guard, Anna Mary. He radioed the Coast Guard. Anna Mary, this is Coast Guard on 16, go ahead. I lost the crew member overboard. Uh, uh, I'm in shock. I never thought that he was dead. Right now he's alive, and we're looking for him. At the Coast Guard station in New Haven, Connecticut, Commander John Thiel was in charge. If I give you truth serum, you're not betting that you're going to find this guy. My fear is we're not going to find anything. Immediately, he put search and rescue protocols in place. We have all kinds of inputs that we put in there as far as how tall he is, whether he was wearing a flotation device or not, what the winds are doing, the currents. It just mathematically spits out anywhere from five to 10,000 computations. So each one of these dots could be John Aldrich. The computer produced a zone of probability where Aldridge would most likely be. It was roughly the size of Rhode Island. How could you possibly search an area the size of Rhode Island and find them? We train our people of what to look for. 
Uh, we talk about either a coconut or a basketball floating on the water, which is incredibly hard. On board the Anna Mary, a critical clue. Anthony found the busted off cooler handle, helping the Coast Guard and a volunteer fleet of fishing boats narrow the search. Different fishing friends out on the ocean started calling me, asking me where I was. And he's talking to fishermen about, well, it doesn't make sense. We shouldn't have filled the tanks until the 40 fathom curve. When the Anna Mary reached a depth of 40 fathoms or 240 feet, that was when John and Anthony would start filling those tanks. John was likely moving the cooler Probably the handle broke. You've got that kind of detective work going on? I kept setting goals for myself. I said, I just got to live till morning. I just got to live till morning. Back in the water, the sun was coming up. After a little while, I come up on a swell and I see a, a buoy way in the distance. It was just what John needed, a shot of hope when his supply had nearly run out. Helicopters are going by to the west of me. And, it, and, and you're waving, searching. you're yelling? Uh, all of it, but they, I, I know they're too far away to even see me. With those boots keeping him afloat, Aldridge made it to that buoy and hung on for his life. And I guess within about 40 minutes later, all of a sudden it's like, here comes this helicopter. Big giant thing over the sky. And I start flailing my boots and splashing and waving and everything. And then all of a sudden, that thing turns over the top of me, and then I know, oh my god, I'm saved. Unbelievable. You know, you can't believe, wow, I am going to be saved. Coast Guard swimmer Bob Hovey was lowered into the water and helped John into the basket. 12 hours after he fell into the Atlantic Ocean, sure he was a dead man, John Aldridge was safe. The pilot put his visor back, looked back at me, and he goes, man, you got some will to live. I said, I got a lot of people that love me to, to just to die like that. And he goes, man, you, you're one tough dude. <laughs> you know, he goes, we don't find live people, we find bodies. After the rescue, John didn't see Bob Hovey again. Damn. Mr. Aldridge. Wow. Until we brought them together on the <laughs> dock cow. in Montauk. Oh, gosh, good Thanks, to bro. see you, man. Good, good to it. see you. Wow. What do you remember about the moment of making contact with him in the water. His charisma. When I approached him in the water, I told him how long we had been looking for him. And that's when he said, holy cow, we've been looking for you for nine hours today. You know, and I said, well, I've been looking for you for 12. <laughs> today, the Coast Guard uses the Aldridge rescue as a teaching tool. It's nice when it all goes right. It's nice when it works out. And Kathy, how are you? Hi. <laughs> John's sister, Kathy, was also there when we brought the two together. Thank you so much for saving my brother. <laughs> You're very welcome. John Aldridge's ordeal and miraculous outcome have turned into a new book, a movie deal, and a lot of treasured souvenirs. This is the actual handle that had snapped that Anthony found on the back deck of the boat. None more treasured than those boots. They saved your life. These are the ones that saved my life. Is there a lesson that people hearing your story should learn from what happened to you? Well, positive thinking saved my life. If I didn't have positive thinking in those boots, I would have never made it. Positive thinking and those boots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>